ended up going for a drive last night and I only took my phone, so you get a few pretty images, but that's about it. Otherwise, we're picking up today where I left off yesterday, which was at the chimney. What I want to do here is just build a box around the chimney that keeps the insulation away and then also provides a lip on the bottom. Create a box around the very bottom on the face. And this is so that um, in order to get my air seal, I'm going to use this silicone, you know, normally this would go on top of a roof to seal a chimney on like a metal roof. My idea was to use that as the air barrier because when you have a wood fired stove in a high performance home, it creates a lot of uh, uh, engineering problems, I guess. So this is just what I've come up with. And I really didn't find much, you know, when I looked online about how to air seal these chimneys. Um, so I just kind of thought about it and this is what I came up with. So we'll see how airtight these sections are. I mean, they fit together pretty tight. These stainless seal. I'm sure I'll get some air leakage up through there, but this basically gets plugged up in there. This polish slides up like that. And then this panel would then cover over, you know, the underside of the roof or the ceiling, the underside of the ceiling and would wrap around the stainless steel. So you'll see just a little bit of stainless steel sticking out and then the black coming down and it'll all be black stove pipe all the way down to the stove down here, which I'll end up building a little hearth and this will all get rock in this corner and it'll just be a a real cozy fire corner. Uh, this this whole chimney was quite a quite a job of its own. There's a lot of research and a lot of instruction manuals and booklets. I'm pretty happy with the result. Like, and I couldn't find uh, a an actual metal roofing kit that would work for our metal roofing and the chimney that we're using, or and just just a regular chimney. It just I don't know, metal roofing guys must have their own suppliers that just don't deal with the public, but I, luckily I was able to find something that I was able to modify and get to work, and it's watertight. But that was a, that took, that was a lot of a, that was a stressful operation to penetrate that metal roof, especially, you know, pretty low down on the roof. So there's a lot of water that's coming down, flowing over this roof during a heavy rain, and so it's got to be really sealed well. And now we've had a couple of feet of snow on there and still no leaks at all. So I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> and you know, because of where the chimney's coming out on the roof, I also had to go up pretty high and put in two support rods. And of course those are penetrating the deck too, but those don't seem to have leaked at all either. This is basically, I know most modern fireplaces don't have an intake this big, but if ever in the future you wanted to put in somehow a rocket stove uh, furnace here, if you want to call them furnaces, they operate best with an equal, equally sized inlet and outlet. And so rather than put a small one in now and just, you know, use like a four inch, you can always make an eight inch smaller and put a four inch adapter on there but you, it would be really a pain in the butt to get a bigger one. Anyways, long tangent there. <laughs> but the point being, I need a box around this just to keep the insulation away, but I'm gonna use that box as part of the air barrier. So the air barrier will just jog down in a box down to the ceiling here. And the ceiling around the pipe will be sealed with that silicone gas or silicone chimney flashing. So I need to make sure I have a box that's 18 by 18 in that general area. So, you know, I can air seal down and around to the face and then let the gasket do the rest of it. Now it's not going to be the easiest to wrap a box around this, around the trusses and all that garbage, but I'll do the best I can and I'll tape and caulk the rest and then, and then the spray foam will get anything beyond that. Later today I'm going to take Avery on a hike or to town, it's his choice. So we'll see what he wants to do. Try to get a little bit done this morning before we do that.
Here, I'll show you how I made these cuts, or how I laid out the side piece that's going to go on there. It has, has an angle on the top and an angle on the bottom. This piece here is going to go like this, straight up like that. It's an awkward piece. So I just measured roughly, it's basically around 12 inches on this side. And then I know this is a 212, and I know this is a 412. So then I know, if I know one side and I know the width, I know it's about 19 and a half plus half an inch on each side, so 20 and a half. Come down to my OSB, and I got 12 inches here, and 20 and a half there, and then I drew a 212 line here, and a 412 line there. I'll cut it out, and it should fit. To do a 212 line, and just go to the two and drew a line and up here and went to the four. Okay, now the other two sides. Oh yeah, I had to cut up the little corner there. There we go. I can tape and caulk the corners. I mean, it's not perfect, but and I might put a little spacer here or I might just tape over that, let the tape span that. And wrap it all the way inside here to this face and then the gasket will go on connect right to the tape and the gasket will seal around the tube and I'll have my air seal and we'll see if I need to we'll see what kind of air leakage we're getting through this but these are designed to be fairly airtight you know you don't want the smoke coming out so I mean, even if it's not perfect, it's probably close enough that we won't be losing much air through there once I got this sealed as well as it will be. Pretty weird detail, but necessary. <laughs> you know the water out of our sink, out of the faucets, and yeah. in the bathtub comes from this lake? Yeah! We gotta come here more often. Can't believe we're like five minutes away from this. Yeah. And we don't take advantage of it. <laughs> That was fun. I just took Avery to uh, the local lake we have here <clears throat> that we're ridiculously lucky to have here. We just spent like an hour sitting on the shore and throwing rocks and stuff. It's pretty awesome. Definitely don't take enough time to do things like that. And uh, I'm going to change that. I'm gonna do that at least once a week, try to take him for a hike or go to the beach or something like that. And not spend all my time on this Rather than let this house drive me insane, I should try to have a little fun along the way. But, getting back to the madness, my idea is just to set up the plank a few feet below the bottom of these trusses, and that should, you know, as I should be able to move the plank to the height I need along the way, and it shouldn't be too bad if I just take some time to figure out the process of setting up the, the two ladders inside here. If I have to, like, screw a board to the bottom, two temporary boards to the bottoms of the trusses or something to that effect so that I can rest the ladders against that and then put the, put the plank up. I don't know. I'll figure it out and you'll see it.
I definitely wouldn't design to do it this way from the start, but if you didn't have many options, at least you can see how I'm doing it and putting it in this location. It's definitely a lot of work, but um, it's gonna be worth it because this will allow, a, allow us to have a semi-conditioned attic. I, will, I won't necessarily be heating it per se, but I will have it fully insulated and air sealed and I will blow, uh, I'm, well I'm planning on taking all the exhaust air from the HRV unit and shooting it up there first and then sending it outside. So I'll, I'll dump it in one end up here and let the air flow through and exit down and out to the outside. And so, you know, whatever heat that's left from that HRV will heat that attic space. So it'll constantly be breathing and um, it'll have warmer air than the outside. So I've got it to the next step where tomorrow I'll bring some of the uh, sealant. First I'll tape everything that, I, that needs to be taped or I'm going to tape and then I'll go ahead and caulk everything that I can and uh, in this section and then so and I want to do all this before I move this scaffolding I don't want to have to come back and reset it up just to caulk and glue or caulk and tape so that'll be the plan for tomorrow I'll start off tape and caulk move over to the other side put in the other eight feet and tape and caulk that side and then I'm pretty much a quarter of the way done <laughs> uh, so it's this is going to be a long job, right? I figured that it would be at least a week, but uh, it might be a little over that. So, well, it just depends on how many how many consecutive hours I could throw at it, I guess. So it might be a week, but it's going to be spread out over probably a couple of weeks. And I still need to make a trip to the hardware store and grab that maple. I'd like to do some more work on those doors, but I think. Since I'm kind of started on this, I'd like to just continue on tomorrow morning and just try to get at least, like I said, a quarter of it done. Okay, so that's good for today. Looks like it's gonna be another beautiful sunset. Thank you.